In this video, I'm going to try to help you guys answer a very common question about storage, uh, which is how do you pick the right SSD for your system? And uh, I'm not going to talk about which exact model you should buy, but which aspects you should be looking at, depending on your use case, and uh, which specs you should consider before getting new storage. Because uh, this can be very tricky, and then especially so if you're a beginner and you don't really know uh, what to look for at all. So without further ado, let's begin. The first thing you need to figure out is which form factor you need. If you have a modern desktop PC, if you have a laptop that is a couple of years old, or a PlayStation 5, for example, uh, you would generally look for a 2280 M.2 NVMe SSD. The 2280 part literally means it is 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long. So this is pretty much the default form factor for a modern consumer SSD. Uh, and in most cases, you'll be looking at this type of a drive. If you're looking to upgrade a smaller device, like a uh, gaming handheld, for example, a uh, mini PC or some extremely thin laptops, uh, you might have to look for a smaller SSD, like a 2230 or 2242. And again, this just means that it is 22 millimeters wide and 30 or 42 millimeters long. And if you're in a very old system, you might be limited to using 2.5 inch SATA SSDs, which were the main type of SSDs until several years ago. Uh, 2.5 inch SATA drives didn't have any development in recent years and uh, all your options will be very old by now. But if you're still trying to keep a very old system running, an older SATA SSD is still a way better option than a mechanical hard drive. There are also many more different form factors that do exist as well, but uh, most of those are quite rare and unique, and those are not something that you should worry about as a consumer. So the best thing to do here is to look at your specification sheet of uh, your motherboard, of your laptop, or any other device that you need the SSD for, and that will give you the information uh, you need on which type of SSDs you need to be looking at. Then you need to figure out how much space you need or which capacity you should go for. And the trick here is to basically just figure out how much data you plan to put on it. So if you already have a system, that is a very good place to start because if your current PC has enough of storage and you're building a new PC, uh, then your new system probably doesn't need that much more than you already had. And uh, if you're buying a new SSD because you ran out of storage, uh, you probably have a very good idea of how much more you need on top of that. So there is not a single uniform answer for everyone because uh, the amount of storage will really depend on what you do with your PC. But I think that as a very loose rule, uh, one terabyte SSDs are a great place to start. Uh, one terabyte SSDs tend to be a bit faster than smaller SSDs and the price per gigabyte ratio is a lot better. If you're not on a super tight budget, uh, 50 or 60 euros for a simple one terabyte SSD will make a lot of sense. And I would say 500 gigabyte models will usually be only 15 to 20 years cheaper. But if you are on a super tight budget and you only need a couple of gigabytes for a very simple system, uh, there's nothing really wrong with going for a 500 gigabyte drive either. Two terabytes is a good place to start for a gaming system because uh, games keep getting bigger and bigger and you will fill up a one terabyte SSD very quickly. Plus, 2 terabyte SSDs tend to have the best price per gigabyte ratio these days. So for a gaming system, I would not go for under 2 terabytes. Now, bigger capacity SSDs are even better if you have enough of room in your budget for them. 4 terabyte SSDs are great for uh, high-end gaming systems and workstations, and they're not as expensive as they used to be, but still quite a bit more than 2 terabyte models. And if you get an 8 terabyte SSD for your game library, so you never have to worry about uh, what you're going to install or uninstall, it would be very nice, but that will cost you a lot. So you really have to decide for yourself uh, where to draw that line, depending on your budget. When it comes to M.2 NVMe SSDs, there is also a matter of different PCIe generations that are available on the market, which is usually Gen 3, Gen 4, or Gen 5. Uh, Gen 5 drives are newest and usually faster than the older generation ones. Now, the devices you plan to install your SSD into will also list what PCIe generation their slots are. But 
it is very important to know that a PCIe slot is both forwards and backwards compatible, which means that you can put a Gen 3 SSD in a Gen 5 slot on your motherboard or a Gen 5 SSD in a Gen 3 slot of your motherboard. Though, if you put a higher generation drive in a slot that only supports lower generations, uh, you won't be able to fully benefit from the higher speeds that the newer generation drive will offer. So it will work, but it won't be as fast as it can be. If your device supports a Gen 4 NVMe SSD, like most recent motherboards do, or like a PlayStation 5 does, uh, my advice would be to look for a Gen 4 SSD because uh, they will cost you more or less the same as the older Gen 3 drives nowadays. While Gen 5 drives will most likely be way too expensive because they're still quite new and also not worth getting because you won't benefit from their higher speed. And even if your motherboard does support the newest Gen 5 drives, you really have to consider that even though Gen 5 drives are generally faster, the real world benefit is only worth it in very specific use cases. So if you're buying a very high-end system without a set budget and you just want to get the very best that money can buy, or you know that for your use case, the SSD performance is actually important, like for video editing, for example, then getting a Gen 5 SSD will make sense. If you're not sure or you have a budget to consider, uh, getting a very good Gen 4 drive is the way to go, even if your motherboard supports Gen 5. One of the more tricky parts to discuss is the component choice. So for a very long time, having a DRAM cache or not was a very good indicator uh, whether a drive was high-end or low-end. A DRAM cache is basically a small buffer of fast memory that is much faster than the rest of the storage of the drive and that can really help performance in most use cases. So high-end drives would pretty much always come with DRAM cache, while not having DRAM cache was always considered a cost-saving measure. But things are a bit more complicated nowadays because newer drives have the ability to use your system's DRAM more efficiently. And uh, with faster DDR5 systems, there are plenty of examples where a lower-end SSD without DRAM cache could outperform a higher-end SSD with DRAM cache. So you will have to check actual reviews and performance numbers instead of just buying an SSD based on the fact if it has DRAM cache or not. But as a general rule, yet again, uh, if you need a drive for a more intense workload like video editing, for example, or some other uh, storage heavy app, an SSD with DRAM cache is the way to go. It is just not that important anymore for lighter use cases and it is not important for gaming. And it is a similar story when it comes to the type of flash memory that SSDs come with. Uh, almost every modern model will use either TLC or QLC memory. A TLC or triple level cell type can store three bits of data per cell, while QLC or quad level cell type can store four bits of data per cell. Uh, more bits of data per cell is generally considered worse for performance and actually for reliability, but it is cheaper. So as a general rule, SSDs that list TLC memory in their specs are generally better than the ones that list QLC memory. And QLC SSDs should only be considered if they're actually much cheaper. That being said, we have seen some newer QLC drives that do outperform older TLC drives, and uh, SSD reliability keeps improving every year as well. So a much older TLC SSD could very well be both slower and less durable than a brand new QLC model. So just like with uh, DRAM cache, my advice here would be to not just focus too much on the specific type of memory, but to use reviews to check performance instead. And also, just like with DRAM cache, if you're looking for an SSD for a high-end system and expect to really stress your drive, uh, choosing a TLC SSD is definitely the way to go. When it comes to cooling though, the choice is much easier because you should always try to use a heatsink whenever it is possible because cooling your SSDs will keep them performing at their best for a longer periods of time and it will generally make them live longer too. And uh, no, you actually do not need those super big oversized heat sinks that some new Gen 5 SSDs come with, but some sort of cooling is always recommended. Now, most motherboards do come with heat sinks that work more than well enough, but if your motherboard doesn't have them for some reason and you bought an SSD without a heat sink, you can actually grab a simple heat sink off Amazon for a couple of euros or dollars and it will be more than good enough. 
Uh, if you don't know which one to get, uh, I am gonna leave a few links in the description down below uh, with a few examples for Europe and for the US, and you can just go ahead and check that out. Now, some devices will have limited space for cooling, like the PlayStation 5, for example, and many brands, including Corsair, tend to list PlayStation compatibility with each of their products. But for other devices, you will have to check heatsink compatibility yourself in the specification list. So a rule here is if there is space for it, always cool your SSD. And that brings me to the last topic of this video, which is endurance and reliability. Ideally, you would want to buy an SSD that is most durable and most reliable, but there is just no way to really prove which SSD will be the most reliable because there is no realistic ways to test this as a reviewer. You can look at the specs, but that is pretty much it. I usually look for a five year long warranty, which is uh, typical for majority of SSDs, uh, because the models that only offer two or three years of warranty show that the manufacturer doesn't really trust their product enough to offer more. Uh, you can also check the endurance rating, which is usually listed as TBW or total bytes written value, uh, which tells you how much data you can write in total before your warranty expires. Uh, around 600 terabytes per terabyte of capacity is a nice minimum to aim for, I would say. Most popular SSDs have very similar endurance ratings to begin with, and a lot of those models will be able to handle a lot more than they're rated for, but some can still fail before hitting that limit. So those numbers don't really mean as much as you might expect. And uh, keep in mind, uh, most people will never get close to the endurance rating limit, but it is again, the amount of trust that the manufacturer puts in their product. So my advice here would be to just stick to brands with a good reputation and always have a plan B if things go south, because any SSD can break, so uh, make sure you always back up your data properly, no matter which type of storage you go for. And I think that should be it, or at least uh, these are the steps that I go through when picking SSDs for my own systems. Uh, if you're wondering which model to go for, you can also check uh, my most recent SSD roundup, which I'm gonna link in the description down below. So I hope this video was helpful to you. And uh, last, but definitely not the least, a big thanks to Corsair for making this video possible and uh, sending all these drives for me to use. Uh, that's all for today, so bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.